Hey there, and thank you so much for joining me for this video today. I am so, so glad that you're here. This is the introduction video, and I'm going to share a little bit more about what you can expect from this YouTube page in 2019 and beyond. So I started this YouTube page last year in 2018. Yes, I started a YouTube page in 2018. It's like, who does that, right? Isn't everybody already on YouTube that is on YouTube? And I know that I'm late to the game, but I figure it is better late than never. It's better now that I never do this, that I never put my voice out there to the world. So here I am. And I gotta say, it's taken me exactly the amount of time that it's needed to get to this point. I wasn't always an outgoing, chatty, social person. In fact, prior to my 20s, I was shy, quiet, sensitive, very standoffish in some ways. I kind of kept to myself, I was quiet. And then something happened when I got into my 20s. It may have been that I was pursuing a career in teaching. And so I was always talking with people and always chatting and that's when things really came out. And so now over the past 12 years, it has been a really cool thing to develop as a person and to kind of see myself develop into the place where I feel comfortable enough sitting here recording today. And if you know me from the business community, you'll probably know and you'll probably go, oh my gosh, Rebecca, you are not an antisocial person. I have, I listen to the podcast that you run. I actually run a podcast called Let's Talk Sales. Um, it's on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, you know, wherever you want to listen to shows if you want to check that out. I also run a webinar series that's all about sales and marketing growth, business growth. I'm also a public speaker and speak about business growth, marketing strategies, and using LinkedIn successfully for business, among other things. So I know that it might seem a little bit like, wow, okay, you're a pretty social person. Why have, has it taken you so long to do this? But honestly, it, it just took me a long time. It took me a while to feel comfortable. And you know, that's one of the reasons why I started this page. And I can't wait to share this next announcement with you. This year in 2019, I'm launching a brand new website. It's called theradiantmission.com. And I cannot wait to share it with you. I am so excited. And it is the reason why I started this YouTube page in 2018 and started dabbling with some videos. It may have seemed a little random. There are some very different videos out there. You saw makeup tutorials, you also saw client time-lapse videos from makeup jobs. You also probably saw the how to grow an avocado tree. And we did a little personal video of my husband and I getting our first real Christmas tree together this year. We got married in this year, last year. We got married in 2018. So there is some different stuff on there. And I apologize if it seemed a little bit confusing and if you are wondering, all right, what kind of page is this going to be? Well, here is the clarity on that. In a few weeks, the Radiant Mission will launch online. I've been working on the website in the background, and my hope is that I will have this website up and available to you by January 15th. If you're watching this video after that, check it out. So what is the Radiant Mission? Well, before I share more about the site with you, I'd like to give you a little bit of context. Let's back up a little bit. When I was 18 years old, I became a makeup artist. I actually got started through the Mary Kay brand. There was a woman at our church who sold Mary Kay for a very long time. She was very successful with the business. And when I turned 18, she said, let's, let's get you going, let's get on this. So I decided to get started. And I learned a lot about skincare and makeup application and all that good stuff. But after a couple of years, I decided that I wanted to go out on my own, venture out outside of just using the Mary Kay brand because there were so many other really great makeup brands out there. And that is when I got started in makeup. Now, simultaneously, I have always worked in business as well. 
From the time that I was 16, I actually got a job at a diabetic supply company and I was working on the business side of that business, learning all about their processes and strategies and the great stuff going on there. I then continued on to work at a corporate office for a property damage restoration franchise. And I was working in a very corporate environment. This was also when I started college. I went to college at Florida Atlantic University and I earned my undergraduate degree in English. Now, this is probably where the story is gonna get a little bit interesting for you because I started college when I was 16. So when I graduated with my undergraduate degree, I was turning 20. I felt like I was very young to be out in the world and hey, if I had the opportunity to continue my education, I figured that that was the time to do it. So I decided at that time to go for my master's degree. So my master's degree is also in English. During this time, I'll mention that I started to transition from the world of business to the world of education. I was really interested in becoming a teacher, but I didn't know what I wanted to teach. So I taught in a third grade classroom. I became a substitute teacher and I taught for multiple different grades in elementary and middle school. I skipped high school altogether because I figured that was gonna be way too intense for me. And then when I was in my master's program, I taught college writing for freshmen and sophomore college students at Fort Atlantic University. And it was an amazing experience. It really opened me up a lot, socially, of course, but more than that, it opened up my mind to so many possibilities. And I really realized in that moment how much I loved teaching. No matter what it is, I just love to learn things and I love to pass the things that I learn along to other people. It brings me so much joy. There is nothing that I enjoy more than learning something and being so excited about it and then having an opportunity to share that with someone else who's excited about that particular thing. So I absolutely loved teaching. But after I graduated with my master's degree, I got a really great opportunity to work as an editor for a print and promotional company. So I jumped on that opportunity and I gotta tell you, it was an incredible experience because I was able to expand my skill sets even more. I learned how to use the Adobe Suite so how to use Photoshop, how to use Illustrator, InDesign, all of those types of programs. At this time, I was also dabbling a little bit with video. I actually started a YouTube page way back in the day, and it's called Motorcycle Chick One. It's still online, there's still videos on there. And I'll talk to you a little bit more about that part in a minute. But as far as my career goes, I was really kind of back in business. Now our company, did presentations from time to time. And that was an opportunity for me to get to teach again. So I really enjoyed that part of the job and kind of staying in this teaching environment and attitude. And plus, I learned that when you're working in business and you're working with customers, you're always working from a place of education. It's all about educating your buyers and learning from your buyers. So that was something that was really cool. After working as an editor for a couple of years, the business kind of slowed down a little bit and I had to make a decision about where I wanted to pivot to next. And funny enough, it was actually my brother who called me and said, hey, I'd love for you to come up to the office. I have a little project for you that I'd like you to do. And you know, let's just come up and do this project basically. So I went up to his office and the project was to take some pictures and do a little bit of marketing stuff for him. And so I did the project and he was like, you know, you would be really good at sales. And I was like, no, <laughs> no, I don't think so. I don't know about that. It seems like out of my wheelhouse, so to speak. And he was like, no, you need to be in sales. Let's figure this out. So what we ended up doing was he and I came up with 90 day, a 90 day agreement, essentially, where he would train me how to work in sales at his company, which was a property damage restoration company. And just side note, because if you'll notice a couple jobs ago, I worked at a property damage restoration company. 
my dad has been in the property damage restoration industry for essentially his entire career. So as kids, we grew up in that industry, understanding it and knowing it. And my brother that I worked for, that's what he did after college is started a property damage restoration franchise. He is still servicing the Palm Beach County, Florida area today. So if you need somebody, check him out. He's awesome. But he basically said, all right, let's do 90 days. I'll teach you if at the end of this, you hate it, you can quit. Or if I think that you're terrible, you know, we'll just end this. And it ended up being, gosh, I, how many years? Uh, four, three years, four years that we ended up working together. So those 90 days went really well. And oh my gosh, I don't even know where to start with talking about that job because it just taught me so many lessons and I met some of the most amazing, incredible people that I am still friends with to this day, years, so many years later, that it is just what a blessing that job was. What a blessing. Now, of course, it is what really pushed me out of my comfort zone and really pushed me out there to say, I mean, I, had, I was cold calling. I was walking into insurance agencies and my goal was to build a relationship. Now, that is the difference between my brother's company and a lot of other companies that are out there is their focus a lot of times at companies is to make profit, make money, right? I mean, everybody needs to pay their bills and all that stuff. But what was so different about my brother's business was that people were what was at the heart of his company. It was serving others. I will never forget starting that job and on my first day, my brother gave me a book called The Passion Driven Life by Rick Warren. And it was all about finding your purpose in life. And his focus, my brother's focus, and Rick Warren's focus it, within the book, both of them had an essential core that, you know, we're all searching for, we're all searching for meaning in life. We all wanna know why we're here. Why am I doing what I'm doing? It, why are we doing any of this? What is the point of all of this? And Rick Warren in his book kind of boils it down. But my brother as a business owner was able to bring this to his company. And I thought that was such an amazing thing. So kudos to you, Nate, for doing that. Cause that was fantastic. And really the point that I'm trying to get out here is that the purpose of life is service. Now I know that that probably doesn't sound that exciting. It's probably not, you know, the most thrilling thing. If you heard somebody say like the purpose of life is service, really, that's, that's what the purpose of life is. That sounds terrible, awful, and like a lot of work. Well, okay, I can give that to you maybe, <laughs> but really the purpose of life is service. We are always serving others. And if we're not serving others, then what are we doing? We are disservicing others, maybe. I don't know, just gonna throw that one out there. So yes, I know that service doesn't sound like an exciting thing, but you know what? I promise you that it is. And you know what's incredible about serving others and serving other people is it comes back. It's a full circle action. It is an action that creates a full circle effect to it. I want to explain this to you a little bit better, but I think the way to actually explain it is to encourage you to take some action to serve others. So let me give you an example. If you were to go into your job tomorrow, no matter what it is that you do, and let's say that service is not something that you really focus on, Go into your job and think about what can I do to service, to benefit, to help, to encourage, to love, to share encouragement. What can I do to serve my coworkers? What can I do to be of service to them, to help them, to benefit their lives in some way? Then take it a step further. What about your customers? If you're customer facing or client facing, what can I do to help those customers? 
Now, if you're not customer facing, if you work in accounting or you work in HR or behind the scenes, where you don't always get to interface with the customers of the company that you work for, I want you to start talking to people. Start talking to people in your organization. Talk to the salespeople, talk to the business developers, talk to anyone, talk to the customer service team, talk to anybody that is interfacing with the customers and ask them to tell you about their experience and how they're able to help people. That'll kind of get you within that mindset. But then also look at your job and look at your work. How is what you're doing making an impact on the organization? How is it serving the organization? Once you think about some of these things, I promise you're gonna to start to understand and realize what I'm meaning when I say service. And I wanna give you guys an example because this is gonna make it a little bit more relevant and make sense a little bit more. That's one of the reasons why I love being a makeup artist so much is because I get to service other people. I get to provide a service to the women in my community that is incredible. Now, first of all, you probably notice I mostly only work in the bridal industry and that's for a reason. I actually love the bridal industry because I love love. I know it's a little cliche, but it's true. I love love. I am a diehard romantic. I love romantic movies. I love love stories. I love anything to do with that kind of stuff. I also love marriage. I am a huge advocate for marriage. I believe that a marriage will make you a stronger, better human being. And there is no better way to spend life than with a partner, an actual teammate and partner by your side. Now, I know it's not easy. Marriage is really hard. Things change as time goes on. People change, situations change. And I know that it's not always the easiest of topics to talk about, but I wanted to throw that out there to you guys that marriage, I think it is a beautiful, beautiful thing. And it is a pleasure and an honor to be able to work with couples that are literally planning the rest of their lives together. To be there for that special day on a journey that's that big is so incredible. It really is an incredible thing. So that is the reason why I love being a makeup artist so much. So one of the things that I love the most about it is that at the end of the day, at the end of the makeup trials and the wedding day, the most beautiful part of all of this is friendship and that on the other side of it, the brides that I've worked with, we become friends at the end of it. And I have sisters for life that we met such, an, such a special time, such a big time. If we weren't already friends before, because many of my brides are my personal girlfriends as well, they know who to go to when the time comes around. So when your time comes around, don't forget to call me. I would love to be there for you to make your day special. But anyway, this is not a pitch in any way. I just wanted to share with you why that is a line of work that I have pursued in addition to the other career aspirations that I've also been working on. I just love to serve people. This is also why I work in sales and marketing consulting. I get an opportunity to work with people that are trying to grow amazing businesses, mission-driven companies that are trying to do really great and incredible things in the world. All right, so let's continue the career story real quick to wrap this back. So service is key. As I mentioned, I worked for my brother down in South Florida, and that's another thing just so you guys know where I'm from. I am from Florida. I am a native Floridian. I was born in Longwood, Florida. We moved away from Florida when I was almost four years old to Charlotte, North Carolina. We lived there for two years. We moved to Illinois for two years. We moved to Clifton Park, New York for two years. And then when I was nine, we moved back to Florida. And at that point I was nine and we moved to Coral Springs, Florida. So I grew up in Coral Springs, the Coral Springs, Parkland, Margate area for a very long time. And then when I went to college out in Boca Raton, I moved to Boca Raton and lived in that area for quite a while, as well as West Palm Beach. In 2015, I decided to go on an adventure. <laughs> 
I really pushed myself out of my own comfort zone very, very much by doing this. I moved by myself from South Florida to New York City to the Big Apple. 2019 marks five years that I have been in the Northeast. When I moved up here, I moved my makeup business from South Florida up to New York City, which I also want to mention to you guys, you might notice my sister and I actually started Radiant together six months before I moved to New York. My sister moved to LA, then I moved to New York, so now we're bi-coastal. But moving my business to a new area was really interesting. I was experiencing a whole new world. Everything was different. Not just the people, but getting around is different. Uh, you know, taking the subway, trying to figure out how you're gonna get to where you need to go, all that kind of stuff was very different. And in addition to building my makeup business here in New York City, I also was doing some sales and marketing consulting. After doing that for a while, I got an opportunity to work full time as the director of marketing for a sales consulting company. It has been such an incredible learning experience. I have learned so much. I've expanded my horizon so much. I've grown as a human being so much. I am sitting here talking to you today, likely because of my now comfort with speaking and talking, all of that kind of good stuff. And it has just been incredible. So now here we are today. I run my makeup artistry business called Radiant Makeup Artistry, or also known as Radiant Makeup NYC. And I'm also a director of marketing and sales and marketing consultant and speaker. And here I am about to launch something else. Might seem crazy. You might be wondering where I find the time to do all this stuff. Uh, the answer is I have no idea. <laughs> I'll let you know when I figure it out. I'm just always going, kind of like the Energizer Bunny, just always doing something, always thinking, always strategizing, always wondering what's next, what are we gonna do? What's gonna, what's gonna happen? Who can we help? Who can we serve? And so that is what brings us here to the Radiant Mission. Oh my gosh. All right, so let's talk about the Radiant Mission. The Radiant Mission is all about that core value that I mentioned earlier serving others. It's all about pursuing a life with purpose. I don't know about you, but there have been a lot of times in my life where I felt lost. I felt that there was no vision. I didn't know what to do. And of course, in those moments, I'd pray and I'd say, God, tell me, what do I need to be doing right now? What am I doing wrong? What, what is your plan for me? Why is this happening? And I have to tell you that in all of those situations, the thing that has gotten me through is faith. Faith, family, talking to people that love you and that care, that can help you get through those types of situations. Something I've noticed is that life is not easy right now for a lot of people, myself included in this. I've struggled with my own mental health issues. I've gone through some very serious depressions and anxieties and just have had some very, very difficult times. As most of us have, right? This is life, it's not easy. It's not always a walk in the park, not always cupcakes and roses and rainbows and butterflies and all of the good things. Sometimes it's just sucky. Sometimes things are just not great. And in those moments, where I have felt lost, in those moments where I have felt helpless or like I couldn't get out of a situation, the thing that has always gotten me through, as I mentioned, prayer of course, but people, people help us to get through the hard times. People help us to get through our struggles and what is going on around us. That's why I was inspired to start the Radiant Mission. The Radiant Mission is a resource. It is a website where you can go to find inspiration for your life. It's all about pursuing a life of passion, pursuing a life where you're pursuing your passions, what makes you happy, what brings you joy in this world, what brings you hope and 
allows you to be your best self because that's what's important here. We all are working so hard to be our best selves or we might feel like we're not our best selves and we don't know how to get there. Well, I would love to be a part of that journey with you. I would love to help you get there. So on the Radiant Mission website, you are going to find resources that are all about spreading joy, sharing love, and pursuing your passions. Of course, I'll also be talking about the concept of serving others and how we can serve others in our day-to-day -day and what that looks like, what that impact looks like. As this video comes to a close, I would love to share a couple of my own personal passions with you so you know what to expect on the Radiant Mission website, as well as on this YouTube page and across social media, because I have a lot of passions. As you know, I love to serve people. I love makeup artistry, and I'm really passionate about skincare. I've actually been going through some pretty serious and scary health issues lately because of an unknown allergen or multiple unknown allergens. We're not sure yet but I've been having some pretty severe allergic reactions over the past year and a half, and we haven't quite figured out why. Now, I've always had skin sensitivities. As you've been watching this video, you'll probably notice that I have developed hives on my chest. It's just from, we don't know why, it's just from being excited, it's just from heat, the heat of the lights, I don't know, it's from, it just happens to me, but I have very sensitive skin. And as a makeup artist, this is really hard because I'm always using brand new products, I'm trying things out, I'm experimenting with you know, different looks and different tricks, and I'm constantly running up against barriers because of it. I have to stop because I am having an allergic reaction to something, or I have to remember to take my Allegra in the morning so that I can avoid some of these problems. But what's been a little bit scarier is ever since I turned 30, I have been having severe allergic reactions. The type of reactions where your lips swell up, everything swells up, you're itchy from head to toe, awful, excruciating stomach aches, and all of the stuff that you don't want to experience. And we haven't been able to figure out why yet. So this is something that I'm personally going through right now. And I wanted to share it with you because it's something that I'm gonna be talking about on this channel and as we're going through this. So when I talk about these issues that I'm going through, I want you to know that I don't want this to be about me. I want this to be a much larger conversation about this problem that we're having, this issue of allergies and why people are developing allergies and awareness about allergies, I think is one of the bigger things. It's been really hard to have these reactions and afterwards people kind of joke around and they're like, oh, you gotta live in a bubble. You are, you know, you're too sensitive. You just need to be in quarantine. And it's hurtful to me because I didn't ask for this. I didn't ask to be allergic to things or to get irritations about things or any of that stuff. It just happened. You know, I literally just woke up one day, took a sulfa antibiotic after I had a surgery and that was my first reaction. So, hey, at least we do know one of the allergens. But ever since, I've been having more issues that aren't related to sulfa antibiotics. And so now we're trying to figure out what is the cause and what's causing this problem. So you'll likely hear more about that. The other reason I mention this is because I'm very passionate about makeup and skincare, and the industry right now is a little bit scary. You could literally buy a product and have no idea what's in it. They could put rat poison in it and sell it to you and you might not even know. There are so many different places to buy products online, so many different resources, and there's no regulation for most of this stuff. Not to mention, there are loopholes with things like the word fragrance, that when they put fragrance, it could literally be a hundred ingredients that are unlisted on a package. These are all things that I think are important to talk about. They're important for us to have conversations about because I don't know about you, but I would like to live in a world that's a little bit more transparent, especially with all these allergy issues. Transparency is so important with products and with skincare, especially. I mean, we're putting this on our bodies every single day. 
We're washing our hair every single day, using shaving cream, lotions, scrubs. All of these things that we put on our bodies impact us in some way. So I'm gonna be talking about that here and I hope that you are in for that ride. All right, this next one is a true passion and something that might surprise you. If you've been watching my videos, you may have already gotten in the loop of this, or if you follow me on social media, I'm sure that you've probably seen something about this before, but if you're brand new, get ready. I am so super passionate about motorcycles. And not just any motorcycles, I am a motorcycle track day rider. I love riding sport bikes on road racing tracks. It is an absolute thrill and joy of my life. It is the one thing that really makes me feel centered and just, I just, I love it. I love the adrenaline, I love the rush, I love the speed, but I love the corners the most. So I'm really passionate about that. Um, a lot of people ask me the story of how I got started riding. I'm actually gonna make a separate video about that, but short version, I learned how to use a clutch on a motorcycle when I was about 17. I started practicing a lot when I was 18. I went and took the motorcycle safety course in Florida, got my license, I got my first motorcycle after that, and it's been there ever since. I did my first track day when I was either 19 or 20. I'll have to look back at the dates on the pictures. I was 19 or 20 when I first started riding on the racetrack and um, I've had lots of crashes. I've broken lots of bones. I've actually broken my neck. I've broken my collarbone. I've broken my sacrum, elbow, hand bones, like you name it. I've probably broken it, but that is part of the sport and I know that it sounds crazy and I'm smiling like a crazy fool telling you about all of these crazy crashes, but it is just something that I truly love. Now, I had the tremendous pleasure of being invited to instruct for a track day organization many moons ago, and ever since, it's another thing that I love teaching people how to do. Again, serving others and giving back. You know, I could go to the track and I could ride all day by myself and do my own thing, or I could go and race, which I did do. I raced for one season a couple of years back but it doesn't bring me as much joy as instructing and control riding does. I love getting to help other people and I love the look on their face when they just scrubbed off some speed and got a little bit faster and they come in and they're like, holy crap, I was just flying. That's the fastest I've ever gone in my entire life. I'm like, yes, that's awesome. That is the kind of stuff that I live for. So I absolutely love motorcycles, track days, I love instructing. So that's a passion that I really wanna share with you because it's my passion. And I wanna use this as an outlet to talk about you pursuing your passions. And in order to do so, I think it's important that I share with you what I'm passionate about as well. So I hope that you guys are along for the ride with me on this one, no pun intended. What else am I passionate about? Well, um, food. I'm definitely passionate about food. I love food. I love to cook. I love to have parties and have people over and feed people. That is another thing that I love. So we may layer in some food and cooking, recipes, that kind of stuff as we go on. And of course, if you watch the How to Grow an Avocado Tree video, you'll note that I also have become really, really interested in plant life and growing life and kind of that idea and the concept of starting something from a seed and it growing. So I love that about avocados is that you can actually take those pits from the grocery store and grow them into a real tree, which is way cool. But I've been experimenting a lot with plant growing, indoor plant growing, which is kind of funny that I live in the Northeast now and I'm growing plants inside and lived in Florida where I, I could have done gardening and just didn't, it was too hot out. That's why I didn't do it. It actually also ties back to some of this other stuff that we've been talking about, especially with skincare, because a lot of what I've been doing with skincare lately has been experimenting, and I've been experimenting with different plants and different products that are plant-based. So growing my own plants has been a really cool and important piece of that. And of course, food. I'll be sharing more on how you can grow healthy food at home as well. This past summer was my first summer 
growing plants on my balcony, on the 17th floor balcony. I grew tomatoes, I grew cherry tomatoes, and I grew peppers. And it was really cool to see that it doesn't take a lot of space to grow life. You can grow life anywhere. So we'll check that out. And then of course, if you didn't already notice, I absolutely love florals, floral clothes, floral bedding, floral everything, floral books, floral lamps, floral anything. I am a huge shabby chic lover. I will, the first time I ever went to Rachel Ashwell's Shabby Chic store in New York City at least 10 years ago was like the highlight of my life. It was amazing. I absolutely love that stuff. I'm really into antiquing. I just love the beauty of it. It just brings me so much joy. And yes, my favorite color is pink in case you didn't notice. I even write my notes on pink paper. So <laughs> very Elle Woods, I know, but I am just, I love that stuff. I actually, uh, when I first started college, was very interested and my degree was originally interior design, but unfortunately I am not great at math and so I uh, did not end up going down that route. But I still enjoy the decorating side of things. In case you are wondering, Chip and Joanna Gaines from Fixer Upper are my absolute favorite. I love them so much. I, I'm just, they're the best. and. I draw a lot of inspiration from them. So how that fits into this is that you're going to notice a lot of branding that has a lot of pinks, a lot of florals, a lot of shabby chic. So I apologize to my viewers that are not into pink or pretty in pink or all that kind of stuff. Uh, I know everyone has their own aesthetic and their own style and their own brand. And that's really my style and my brand. So that is what I'm gonna put out for the Radiant Mission and some of what you'll be seeing here on this YouTube page. So I know that this was a really long video. If you have stayed and watched this until the end, thank you so much. I appreciate you being here and for listening. I cannot wait to make more videos for you and to really serve you and serve the community and build something beautiful, guys. I really hope that the Radiant Mission becomes a community that is about empowerment, that is about having a better life and pursuing positivity because gosh, we have so much negativity in our world right now and we don't need any more. I think we're good on the negativity. Let's focus on pursuing a life of passion, pursuing a life of purpose. Please be sure to stay tuned to next week's video. Next week, I'm going to be doing an unboxing of a bunch of Pacifica makeup products that I purchased. And this goes back to the story about natural skincare. You know, I have been having these allergy struggles and these sensitivity struggles, and because of it, a lot of times I can't buy traditional makeup from the regular store, from Sephora. Some of these big brands just don't use the best ingredients in their products. And you'll see this in some of my other videos. I'll be talking about ingredients and product lists and what all that stuff means and the apps that you could use to check out this kind of information because there's some good stuff out there. But anyway, next video is gonna be an unboxing, so be sure to check that out. It's going to be my first one that I've ever done. So yes, be sure to tune in next Wednesday. And as a note, new videos will be going up on Wednesdays. I know that the last couple weeks of the year, I didn't post videos and I just wanted to let you guys know I was spending time with my husband and really just relaxing and also building the Radiant Mission website. So I hope that you're looking forward to seeing it as much as I'm excited about presenting it to you. Be sure to check back in on the 15th for the website. And I just can't wait to see what we can all accomplish together in this life. Wishing you love and joy. This week and always, I will see you next week.